was my first time leaving my family and I didn't speak any English. I knew this was something that it was going to change my life. I'm so lucky I made it to the Royal Ballet. As much as people say, because you're talented, it is also so much about luck. Being in the right place at the right time when I auditioned. Right after I had graduated at Columbia, I was training and one of my first clients was Natalie Portman. I helped train her and prepare her for the movie Black Swan. The goal was to have her look like a professional ballerina on stage. As dancers, we're so in tune with our body and, and you know, we know how to control like every. <laughs> I gave birth to my daughter and came back to work when she was six weeks old. I don't think that's physically possible. I don't think you could safely do it. I have to confess that I was not mentally ready. I was not physically ready, but I needed my salary. I needed to come back because I needed to get paid. It's a very, very competitive environment. There's always going to be other people. You really are quickly forgotten and quickly replaced. And it makes it that much harder to come back in. I was afraid of losing my heart. You wanted them to remember you. Like, hey, I have a baby, but I'm here. Don't forget about me. After I had my first child and I came back and I was fit, I had to encourage the younger dancers to see that you can have family and you can come back to dancing. But when you have a newborn, your body really isn't yours in a lot of ways. The breastfeeding was the biggest challenge for me. Begonia would go to work and do her training and do her morning rehearsals and then get home and then express milk at home for the baby. After my second pregnancy, I was aiming to do Juliet. So I worked really, really hard. And I tore the muscle in my car. And, and I didn't make it. So the fact that I didn't do it, I felt, I felt I'd let them down. I feel guilty all the time. If I'm home and I get to spend time with them, then that's amazing. But then I'm not earning money. And also I'm not doing something for myself. But if I do work, then I feel guilty I'm not with the kids. I think that's motherhood. A day can't go by without feeling guilty about something. I knew there was a time limit to have a baby, but there was just no space between me and ballet. It was impossible for me to have a baby. Misato is the first mother to try to come back because all other dancers who wanted to have a family day sort of decide to leave the company. I'd love to combine the two and still be performing, still doing my job. There just isn't enough hours in the day to do both. It's something that I don't want to think about it, but there is going to be an end. I don't want to have to choose, but more and more I'm seeing that I do have to choose. Being a mom is a full-time job, and the type of mother I want to be is, you know, 100% there for my kids and giving them everything. I'm blessed to say that I can do both, Then I don't have to choose one or another. I am able to be a mother and be a ballerina at the same time. I think uh, dancers should be able to choose to have a family. Is it possible to be a ballerina mother? I think it depends on who you are. Congratulations again. We're so excited, Eliza, to have this film as the winner this year. We believe it tells such a beautiful story uh, about these unintended consequences of our progress, the opportunity for us as women to show up in more places around the world, to live out our dreams fully, uh, and still contending with these challenges uh, by the nature of being women. Um, I will welcome Eliza to share a few words. One moment. Hello, my name is Eliza Schroeder, and I'm the director of Colliding Forces, Mothers in Ballet. 
And I'm here to say that I am so extremely excited about having won this wonderful award. And in general, I've been so thrilled to be um, part of this year's Women's Voices Now Film Festival, which is such a fantastic festival with so many amazing films. So I cannot tell you how pleased I am that not only have we been selected for the festival, but also to have won this incredible prize. It really, really means a lot to me and to the whole team behind the film. And um, Colliding Forces has been a, a labor of love. Um, basically, we've made this film for all these incredible women that you have seen in the film and whose journey you've hopefully um, enjoyed. It's been such an honor to work with these incredible women from around the world, these incredible artists athletes and dancers and of course mothers and um, so thank you very much and um, all the best wishes from London and that does it for our 2024 Women Voices Now Film Festival Awards Ceremony I'll invite Heidi back to the stage to say a few words to close us out and just thank you all so much for being a tremendous audience for being an incredible community of filmmakers we're so so grateful um, for your participation today. And um, thank you so much for making this festival possible. Thank you, Chelsea. I'll wait for my state, there we go. Chelsea, thank you so much. Um, our award ceremonies are always long ones. And I feel like that is one of the great assets of doing this online is that we're allowed to gather from all over the world and really hear from the filmmakers. I learned so much from everyone today and I, I really enjoyed seeing the surprise in the faces of those who didn't expect to win. And um, filmmakers always have my most deepest, profound um, admiration for the work that you do, for creating something from nothing and getting other people to come along board with you and somehow making something that is just doesn't exist yet into the world that you share with all of us. Um, in wrapping up, I just want to congratulate Chelsea Byers again for pulling off another film festival. She literally has to coordinate <clears throat> scores of individuals across the different time zones to make this all happen. There's so much behind the scenes work that goes into this. Chelsea, thank you again for bringing together incredible groups of people from the previewers to the jury members to the filmmakers in order to share their stories and their opinions and judgments of all these films. I wish we could have prizes for all of our filmmakers because they're all truly award-winning in my view and and would be in, in the eyes of all of the world. I also want to make a special mention of thank you to our jury members. As, as Cindy mentioned, it was really over 24 hours of films that have to be watched and it is a huge emotional investment. It is not, um, it is not fun necessarily, but the work must be done and the filmmakers must get their feedback and the prizes must be awarded. So thank you for that dedication, that compassion, that determination, that investment in our work. I am tremendously grateful to all of the jury members for, uh, for everything that you have done. I also want to invite all of you who are joining us, if you happen to be in Los Angeles on May 8th in West Hollywood, we will have be having an evening focusing on women's sexual health and reproductive rights, which, um, as we know, is probably one of the most challenging rights that women are seeking to pursue in the world right now. We are, we are seeing a tremendous backslide in the progress we've made on bodily autonomy. So we need to have these conversations. We need to build empathy for women in the eyes of all people, even those who are women who would deny other women the right to their own bodily autonomy. It's not about telling someone what to do, it's about having the power to make the decision for ourselves. And so I'm looking forward to that event on May 8th and hope that you will join us. We will have um, our in-person film festival screening in September. We have lots of films in our film collection online. We are small and mighty, and thus we are also very available to any of you in the world who would like to contact us, to tell us your ideas, uh, consider as a filmmaker doing an interview with us on our YouTube channel, uh, suggest a panel conversation, anything. We need to be having these conversations. We need to be broaching these difficult topics through the power of film. Again, I'm so grateful to the entire team. I can't believe that this film festival is actually coming to a close, the 10th one. It's unbelievable. As Chelsea and I have mentioned a few times, April 30th, you have until then to watch the selected films to this festival. I highly recommend it. Tell your friends, invite them over to watch with you. I look forward to seeing you all at our next event, either in person or online. Congratulations to the incredible filmmakers from around the world. We look forward to following your film journey, to celebrating you, and to bringing more folks into this space with us. So from Women's Voices Now, thank you for supporting us. Thank you for being part of the celebration today. And we look forward to many more opportunities to celebrate films by women, about women, for all. Have a lovely afternoon, evening, and see you next time.